I am Dr. Supraja, consultant pathologist at Yashoda Hospital, Cytex City, and my talk is on rapid on-site evaluation and imprint cytology. So uh, I'd like to start with a question. Which of the following stains are preferred for rose? So the options are displayed. Uh, silver stain, rapid HND, diff quick, both B and C, as in both rapid HND and diff quick, or none of the above. Right, so uh, the audience have answered correctly. It is both B and C. I'll be elaborating on the stains uh, in the following uh, slides. And the second question is, if only bronchial cells are encountered in a lymph node aspirate, they, what are they referred to as? Is it adequate? Is it malignancy? Is it a benign neoplasm? Or are they referred to as contaminants? And yes, the answer have, audience have answered correctly. It is contaminant. So I'm starting my talk. So rapid on-site evaluation, as you all know, is a diagnostic procedure where pathologists check the content and adequacy of the fine needle aspirate smears during an EBUS procedure. And after, after an adequacy is established, a diagnosis is rendered in real time. This will help in patient eligibility for personalized targeted therapies. and after a diagnosis is established. Imprint cytology is when a biopsy, uh, a cryo or a TBLB is imprinted, touched on a glass light and it leaves behind its imprint and then it is examined under a microscope after proper staining. This is also part of ROSE. EBUS TBNA, as you all already know, it's a real-time aspiration of the peribronchial lesions for hilar or mediastinal lymphadenopathy and for diagnosing and staging suspicious lung masses. This has been uh, talked about elaborately in the, by the previous speakers. The equipment necessary for a rose procedure. Now, a rose procedure is better performed if there is a sufficient dialogue between a pathologist and a pulmonologist. So it's better to set up a rose equipment inside the bronchoscopy suit, uh, preferably. So there should be a microscope, a power source, staining materials, slides, and RPMI tubes and holders, formalin and saline containers, and uh, RPMI tubes and holders in case there is a suspicion of lymphoma, formalin and saline uh, for respective uh, specimens uh, for histopathology and microbiology respectively. Now staining protocols, there is no standard staining protocol for performing rows. Any stain which can be done in under 2-3 minutes rapidly is what is preferred. Diff quick is commonly used for rows in many centers. However, rapid Papunicolo as, uh, as it is used uh, uh, in uh, Thailand in such setup or a rapid HND. We use a rapid HND because pathologists are uh, more used to uh, uh, seeing uh, slides uh, stained by rapid HND more than the other stain. So in our setup here uh, in Yashoda High Tech, we prefer using a rapid HND and that is what we do. So this is a short video explaining how rose happens in our setup. Please play the video. So we have set up play. We have set up inside our bronchoscopy suit. That is our workstation. Rose specimen, TBNA specimen is taken on a slide. It is smeared and labeled with a diamond marking pencil. Labeling is very important, especially in cases where multiple sites are uh, biopsied or uh, multiple sites are uh, evaluated. This is a biopsy for which imprints are taken and this biopsy imprint has to be taken before the biopsy is put in formalin preferably and a rapid HNE staining is done. The staining is pretty quick just fixation in alcohol, hematoxylin, eosin, uh, washing it with water, dehydration and he is mounting it with DPX and he is labeling it again. So, uh, and then it will be evaluated by the pathologist. 
So our statistics, we have performed rows on around 150 patients since October 2022, which is when it started here. Adequate cellularity was obtained in about 99% of the cases, and around 32% of our cases revealed malignancy. Uh, 23 point, around 24% were granulomas, and the rest was infective inflammatory etiology. Rose findings, uh, the in all cases with an adequate cellularity, a definitive diagnosis could be rendered during real time itself. And the concordance of the diagnosis made at Rose and final cyto and histo was compared. And it was around 99%. It was because 99% of the cases had adequate cellularity. Now, uh, the cases were uh, around 1 to 2% of the cases which were inconclusive. Uh, uh, the reasons for it. Uh, being an inconclusive rose, I will elaborate in the further slides. So uh, this is a simple overview of what happens. So after uh, after the EBUS TBNA uh, sample is taken, on site it is evaluated, adequacy is assessed, diagnosis is done, and after that, uh, specimen is triaged according to the diagnosis made during rose. In case it is microbiology, sample is taken in normal saline. If it is a, a biopsy, it is taken in formalin. If there is a suspicion of an epithelial malignancy, if it is a suspicion of lymphoma, it should be taken in RPMI medium for flow cytometry and uh, like sir said for ancillary investigations all the material should be ready at the rose station itself now if a rose uh, specimen which is evaluated is inadequate it has to be repeated until an adequate uh, until an adequacy is established and after an adequacy is established we come to the diagnosis if it is benign as we all know nodal sampling uh, can be reactive granuloma uh, which can be either tb or sarcoid if there is necrosis or non necrosis and uh, malignancy. After a diagnosis of malignancy is established, uh, they have to collect additional material for IHC and molecular studies. And uh, uh, the radiology findings have to be correlated as is done. Now, in an unsatisfactory row CBS TBNA, what uh, as pathologists we encounter is, uh, like Sir said, bronchial contamination. So uh, the first slide shows bronchial contamination. If, if this is from a lymph node, all of these are uh, considered as unsatisfactory EBUS because we are not finding any lymphoid tissue. Uh, only ciliated bronchial uh, epithelial cells or if it is predominantly hemorrhagic or if there is oral contamination, oral mucosa and bacteria appear or if there is mucus or if there are cartilage fragments or needle uh, stylet fragments, they are all not, I mean, uh, they are all not reportable during an EBUS. Adequacy is not established. Now, if a rose is adequate, how do we go further? So we interpret it in these basic five categories, positive for malignancy, negative for malignancy, which can be uh, a benign etiology or a normal morphology, inflammation or a reactive lymphadenitis, granulomas, as we know, it can be classified as TB or sarcoid, and inconclusive. I'll be getting to inconclusive shortly. Now, if it is a satisfactory rose, in a reactive lymph node, we'll find a polymorphous population of lymphocytes along with uh, tangible body macrophages. This is the expected cellularity for a reactive lymph node and uh, granuloma. Uh, a granuloma is picturized. If we find a granulomatous lymphadenitis, we look around for surrounding necrosis. Here, it is very satisfactory and a diagnosis could be established. Now, in case it is a lymph node, uh, there is uh, no specified actual diagnostic criteria, but however, many papers have, uh, I mean, many studies have been performed where they say that at least 40 lymphocytes per high power field have to be examined if uh, like if a, if a lymph node aspirate is performed and if we don't find a typical reactive lymph node picture with uh, numerous polymorphous population or tangible body macrophages, at least 40 lymphocytes per high power field we have to examine so that we can uh, call it satisfactory rows if it is from a lymph node sampling. And uh, yes, we do have, uh, uh, like I said, uh, malignancies we have uh, encountered. Uh, around 48% uh, were malignancies only. So uh, it, it, these are from a lung mass. And uh, the first is from a squamous cell carcinoma where sheets of atypical squamous cells were seen. Sometimes we may be lucky enough to find uh, squamous pearls or whorls during a rose itself. This was found during rose itself. And in case of an adenocarcinoma, there is a clear distinction between uh, the benign cells below and uh, a malignant cluster there. Uh, those cells are having uh, enlarged hypochromatic nuclei, moderate amount of cytoplasm, and uh, sometimes cytoplasmic vacuoles may be found. So, and the other uh, commonly encountered tumors during rows are carcinoid and a small cell carcinoma. Here we can clearly appreciate the morphology where there is uh, a 
uh, in carcinoid tumor or NET NOS, as it is referred to, uh, there is a mono monotonous monomorphic population of cells with salt and pepperchromatin uh, and abrupt anisonucleosis. And in a small cell carcinoma, it is very characteristic. Uh, there is there will be uh, uh, Abundant cellularity, scant cytoplasm, enlarged hypochromatic nuclei, and uh, areas of necrosis, apoptosis, rosetting, uh, all of that, uh, and molding, nuclear molding, all of that can be observed. This is our rose slide. Uh, on rose itself, we were able to make a diagnosis. And apart from the primary uh, lung tumors, we have encountered some unusual tumors, including metastatic tumors. So one unusual tumor, I mean, it's not unusual per se, but uh, I mean, it is still common. But in rose itself, we were able to give a reasonably accurate diagnosis. So this is an example of a mucoepidermoid carcinoma, where surrounding we can see mucous cells. And in the center, uh, the cluster is uh, squamoid and intermediate cells. This is a very classic appearance of a low-grade mucoepidermoid carcinoma. This is a rose slide. This is our rose slide. And, uh, and I like to show a couple of metastatic uh, tumors as well. This is a case of metastatic melanoma encountered during rose. The patient had a history. Of course, uh, this is an amelanotic melanoma. There is no melanin pigment. But however, it is a very classical morphology where the cells are all plasmacytoid with enlarged nuclei, prominent uh, nucleoli, and uh, uh, relative discohesion. And uh, the patient obviously had a history of primary melanoma elsewhere. This is a case of a uh, medullary carcinoma. The patient had a history of medullary carcinoma thyroid in his uh, primary as primary and this lesion is from uh, this sampling is from lung and uh, as we can see it is very abundantly cellular uh, adequate and the cells are having abundant granular cytoplasm and uh, it's 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 a very uh, uh, it's it was it, it is a rare match to the lung and uh, the diagnosis could be established with reasonable accuracy during rose itself and a metastatic carcinoma breast of course this is uh, this patient had a history of a carcinoma breast uh, and uh, on rose, this uh, can be told as positive for malignancy favor adenocarcinoma and here we can favor a primary, I mean favor a metastasis over a primary but however IHC is needed to establish that it is from breast origin later on. Next, it is, uh, this is an example of clear cell renal cell carcinoma metastasizing to the lung. This is a rose image where uh, we can find uh, cells with clear, fragile, wispy cytoplasm and uh, 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 pleomorphic nuclei, I mean variably pleomorphic nuclei with uh, conspicuous nucleoli. Uh, so this clear cell renal cell carcinoma was also encountered in our setup. Inconclusive interpretation during rose, one of the most common example is actually a necrosis. And if we are finding even on repeated aspirates, if we are getting only a necrosis without uh, atypical cells or without a granuloma, then uh, we might have to call it necrosis at that point and we'll have to wait for the cell block or the biopsy findings to... Uh, uh, so this is one uh, point where you know, we will not be able to give the pulmonologist uh, a diagnosis uh, because uh, sometimes it might not be possible. Now, in this image, the arrowheads uh, uh, in the uh, top image are showing fibrin and hemorrhage, and the yellow arrows are pointing to coagulative necrosis. If a malignancy is suspected, we can reasonably uh, tell that, uh, you know, the first image could be from uh, it's a coagulative necrosis from a malignancy, but however, differentiating between coagulative necrosis and cache-shading necrosis in a rose might be challenging. If we are not finding a definite viable cells, viable atypical cells or viable granulomas, it might be difficult. So this is one point. And another uh, point where uh, it can be rose can be inconclusive is when uh, the clinical findings, uh, the radiological findings, and the pathological findings do not match. So uh, that. Uh, that can also happen rarely, whereby an inconclusive diagnosis has to be given. So what pathologists should do is, uh, as we as we know, sampling should continue until diagnostic adequacy is obtained. And uh, suction, I mean, uh, sir, discuss suction in the panel discussion. A decision regarding suction applied is the responsibility of the clinician, but if there is a low cell yield uh, during a rose, we can uh, inform the pulmonologist that you know, uh, I'm not finding a good cellularity in the rose. So you can, uh, you know, we can probably suggest that you can do it with a reduced suction next. So uh, a specimen is managed, uh, I mean, uh, specimen triage and management will be uh, talked in the next talk more elaborately. But however, this is a short overview. Granulomatous mi uh, microbiology, malignancy, cell block, or uh, if a biopsy is taken in formalin, reactive lymph node, also cell block should be made, lymphoma, 
flow cytometry, RPMI media. Now there are uh, a few points to remember. If the patient already has an established diagnosis of a non-small cell carcinoma, and if we are having an insufficient yield during rows, we should at least prepare a clot for further molecular workup. This is uh, uh, these scenarios can happen, and uh, and and as always at the end of the uh, rose procedure we have to uh, you know we have to tidy the preparation area and we have to uh, keep it ready for the next session that is also important uh, from a pathologist perspective and another important point from a pathologist perspective is the request form uh, although it is a logistical uh, thing the request form has to be filled completely because uh, it's an important logistic. Uh, the patient details the number of passes made, the uh, station, nodal station numbers from which area, uh, the entire clinical history and the uh, EBUS findings have to be completely filled in a rose form and the slides also have to be labeled properly because this is what we will be uh, storing it for archival so they are very important. And uh, so the advantages and disadvantages of rows, as we all know, yes, it increases the adequacy rate, it's cost effective, it increases the yield and sensitivity, and it decreases the number of passes required for an adequate. If it is established in the first pass itself, we can, uh, you know, move on to uh, triaging it for uh, further. And thorns, that is the uh, disadvantages of rows are, uh, optimal Last. staining quality is needed, is extra time from a cytopathologist and a uh, cytotechnologist is needed. Uh, so, but in spite of all these disadvantages, ROSE uh, does have, uh, you know, uh, I mean, it does improve the uh, yield of an EBUS. And uh, PROSE, uh, a short word about PROSE is a trained pulmonologist can reliably carry out ROSE uh, if, uh, and if, it is, if they are adequately trained. And telecytology and whole slide uh, imaging scanners are the future of ROSE. Uh, so, Yes, uh, I have already concluded. So it has high sensitivity, specificity, and diagnostic accuracy for both granulates, uh, granulomatous and malignancies. Success of rows depends on the sample should be representative, adequate in cellularity, correctly smeared, properly processed and stained, reporting and diagnosis by an expert in cytology. These are my references, and this is the team. Thank you.